Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all of the time and worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon El Che, the living God who loves you with the true agape love. He wants to fill your heart with that love, write that love on your mind, and keep your heart and mind in perfect peace. That's what he does. He's the God who created all the world and all that there is in it, and he sustains it. He keeps it. He's the one who sustains. He's the one who keeps. Mankind is the one who erodes. <laughs> we ride against the truth. The Creator created all things for Himself. And when we come to Christ, He creates in us a new heart. He creates in us a new mind. Our slate of sin has been washed away, wiped away. It is as far away from God as far as the East is from the West. God, the God of heaven and earth, Elohim, has forgiven mankind their sins. And I'm not talking about an inclusive doctrine. I'm talking about everyone who says, I believe that God is who he says he is and that he sent his son to save us, that Jesus Christ is the Savior, the only way that leads to life. He is the one who died and rose again. We must believe with all of our heart and with all of our mind and all of our strength that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the only way to the Father. And if you read your scriptures, you know, all through the New Testament, it's, it's going to, I mean, the Old Testament talks about Christ. He, he's in the beginning. When God opened his mouth and, and, and uttered words, those words were Christ. I'm telling you, the word became flesh. So Jesus Christ is in every page of this book, even when it seems silent. God is there. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Word of God, the Logos and the Rhema, He is the revelation of God. He is the revelation of God, I'm telling you, in us. <laughs> wow. He is truly faithful in all of His house. We are His house. You can read that in Hebrews chapter 3. You are His house. And we have decided to have a new mind. We don't live to ourselves in this world. The world is under the curse. <laughs> you know, all, all mankind has been born into sin. And that is a cursed condition. The Lord took away that curse, nailed that curse to the cross. Hmm? Jesus became a cursed for us so that we don't have to live in that stronghold anymore. And we don't have to live with that mindset anymore, that mind that lived contrary to the will of God. You know, everything God has created, I mean, as far as the trees, the birds, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything, it praises Him. It speaks about, nature talks about God. Psalm 19, and there's other places in the Word that talk about God is, you know, everything that worships Him. We were created to worship God. We, we were created to worship God. Everybody in this life is going to worship something. Even when we were in the world, we worshiped something. I, I remember being a, a teenager, even into my 20s, yeah, I was in my 20s, I remember it, <clears throat> that I worshipped Michael Jackson. Now, you would never think that that was worship. You just, you know, <laughs> raising your hands and, and just jumping up and down and dancing and, and all the screaming you did when he came on TV. I remember going to the concert. My first concert was the Jackson 5. I remember what I was wearing. I remember how I stood there and watched them on the stage. I remember how they pointed at me, the girl with the bright orange dress on. It was a nice dress. I, I missed that dress. I only got to wear it one time, but I remember it very well. But I remember being in my 20s and, and 
they said, you know, you know how they do premieres and they're coming on and everything. And I was upstairs and my father said, sure, you know, the, the Jacksons are on, Michael's on. And I come running downstairs. I jumped out of my chair. I spun around. I ran down those stairs. And as I did it, and I'm telling you, I didn't know the word right then. There was, I knew it inside of me that there was something wrong with that type of worship. And I let it go. I don't even know if I watched the show or not. All I knew is that in my heart, in my being, I knew I had to cut something off and I cut it. Of course, you know, I was saved when I was eight years old. You can get saved at a very young age. And if the, your parents don't have a Bible and they're not fluent with going to church so that the child can get some Sunday school lessons in or some kind of, you, you got to get the word that then you grow in the world, in the knowledge of the world. You you just do what everybody else is doing. You're just going on. But anyway, this word is what inhabits our hearts. The word of God inhabits our hearts. It gives us wisdom and knowledge unto God. And we understand that the only true worship there really is is God the Father. It's God the Son. It's God the Holy Spirit. The only true worship is Him who created all things. Why should He not get all the praise? Why should He not get all the glory? He created you and me. Whatever situation or circumstances arise in our life, if we would cast the care before the Lord. You know, I know that that sometimes is more, I, I say it again, more easily said than actually done. But here I go back to the style of this worship again. When we submit to God, you know, you just find that quiet time. That's why we need that moment with God where it's just me and him or you and him. And you sit down in that place and you just breathe, acknowledging him. Just breathe, acknowledging him. He knows whatever situation there is, and, and the devil likes to beat you down in your mind with it so that that's all you're thinking about. Now you're overcome by that. The Lord's mercies never fail. Our soul knows its need for God. I know. We're spiritual beings in a physical body, but the soul is in the way, and it must submit to the knowledge of God. The knowledge of who he is and what he has done for us. We are his children. The children of his pastor. We are the children of his son. The DNA of Christ is now living in our hearts. All the more so. We should be like, our hearts should just so be filled with Abba, Abba, Abba. Because the spirit of God that is living in us is drawing us to the Father. With every situation we have, we're drawn, we're drawn, we're drawn. If the waves of the sea worship God, if the sun, the moon, and the stars bow down before him, if the, even the sky will rip apart for him, you know, whatever he commands, it listens. There's really, there really isn't any weapon formed against you that can prosper in your soul. All things are possible through God, especially for us who believe on His, on what he's done for us, on who he is and what he's done for us. We have to take hold of that and just begin to really worship him. I'm learning a lesson in myself. I must begin to worship him and let whatever the anxiety is, whatever the fear, whatever the trauma is, whatever the reoccurrence is, greater is he that is in me. Jesus gave his life for me. I have to take... Oh, I think I'm jumping. I have to take what the Lord has given me by force. I have to take it by force. I'm telling you, the kingdom of God suffers violence. Now, I, 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 this is how I think this Jesus meant this. The kingdom of God is suffering violent, 
violence and the vi and violently we enter into the kingdom. We are standing against a lie and having to rush and grab, <laughs> go into the truth. You know, it's a, it's a forceful event spiritually that we're doing as we learn to worship God and make our souls surrender to the knowledge of God. Because hmm? that soul is so busy learn, leaning on what it heard and what it was before or what it looks like it will be today. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Lord God Almighty gave you the kingdom. Jesus said that the kingdom of, of heaven is not, the kingdom of God is not outside of you. It's within you because, see, you've received Christ. You believe that he is. And you believe God sent his son and that God raised his son from the dead. Jesus Christ has blown the mind of the world and yet they refuse to believe it. But we do. We believe it. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I, I don't believe that there's anything too hard for the Lord. Nothing is too hard for the Lord when we keep on believing in Him. It, it wouldn't matter if we didn't believe. God will still be who He is. But I refuse to stop believing in the one I love, the one who loves me. I refuse to be, you know thinking about being judged and cast into the lake of fire for unbelief. I want the world to know that Jesus is Lord. I want my family to know that Jesus is Lord. I want my neighbors to know Jesus is Lord. Anybody that I come in contact with, I want them to know Jesus is Lord, and they need to know it through the pattern of my life, through the fruitfulness of my life, through the power of prayer in my life for their their soul's sake somebody walks up to you for in pain today you should be able to say you know remember that scripture <laughs> you shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover hmm? we need to be like the true disciples the true followers of Christ if we believe what we believe because there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Our family members are not too hard for the Lord. We stop, we, we've got to stop com, um, conforming to the image of their life. Stop conforming against the patterns of their life. Why, why is this called the raging storm against the children of God? Well, I turned on my computer and it had upgraded. So I have this, a picture of a great big sea and the waves are smashing against a mountain and there's a lighthouse with the light shining towards me and it looks like a storm is coming well we've had these storms in our lives for a very long time i'm not telling you anything futuristic okay it's just that we've had these storms brewing for a very long time in our lives and we've not overcome the flesh We've not overcome the devil. We've not overcome the world. But we are supposed to overcome the flesh, the devil, and the world by our faith. Faith in God's ability. It's not about me. It's about him. It's not about you. It's about him. God loves you with such an agape love, an unconditional love. He wants to come in and inhabit your praise. He wants to be your praise. And believe me, he deserves it. We're fighting against the flesh, the devil, and the world. The kingdom of God is ours. We have to violently take hold of it. By entering into the rest of God. It's, 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 it's crazy, right? How do you violently take hold <laughs> of the kingdom? By resting in what God said. By truly believing with all your heart, with all your mind and all your strength what God said. Mankind doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word 
that comes from the mouth of a living God. And he's put his spirit in us who reminds us of all truth. We are not, <laughs> we're not alone. I'm alone every day physically. Yes, my husband, he, he goes to work, okay? But I'm here in the house. My work is here. So I don't have a lot of company in and out. But what I'm saying is, you're not alone. Christ is in you and with you. And all I pray for us is to really treat him as the father he is. Treat him as the friend that he is. Treat him like the help that he is. He's alive and real and wants to strengthen us with strength in the inner man. We just have to get intimate with him. Intimate. You know, you let, if, if you've ever had a boyfriend, if you've ever had a girlfriend, you let them whisper in your ear. You heard those whispers and your heart jumped. It leaped. Maybe, maybe you haven't had that experience. I don't know. I'm just, but the words of people make you glad. How much more the one who created the world with his very words. Hmm? The one who, who scooped mankind out of the dust of the ground, blew his own breath, blew his breath into the nostrils of man. This is still existing today in us. <laughs> we became a living soul. The breath of God, the breath of the Almighty is in us. Yeah. He loves you. He loves you. He loves us. He loves us. Each and every one of us. And he wants to hold you close. And he wants to perfect what concerns you. Take hold of the knowledge of God. The wisdom of our creator. Sit down with him and worship him. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. That's, that's worship. Let me tell you about worship. It's not just singing a song. It's being quiet for a little bit. It is sitting in his presence and saying, Lord, I'm here. I love you so much. Maybe it's thank you for loving me, Father God. You no, know, the next word shouldn't be, I don't know what I'm going to do. I understand you feel that way. I, I get it. I know. I, I, I'm there. I've been there. But greater is he that is in us. The Lord will not leave us without instruction. Sometimes it takes a while to get the instruction. But I know that if we surrender our heart whole, wholly to the Lord, acknowledging him as we walk, as we talk, as we get up. What's, doesn't it say that in Deuteronomy chapter 5? Chapter 6, Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I'm not going to read that whole thing. I just want to remind myself that he says that. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently to your children. Don't feel guilty if you didn't have the chance to do that. God knows how to redeem the time and bring salvation to our loved ones. And you shall talk of them when you sit down in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and, thy, and they shall be as, as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them upon the post of your house and on your gates, and it shall be when the Lord your God shall have brought you into the land which he swore your fathers to give them to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give the, the great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things. See, the Lord is going to take care of you. He's going to... Look at these people. We're filled with the knowledge of God's will. These people here, they saw the signs and miracles and the wonders of God. They actually physically saw these things happen. And yet they still doubted God. They had issues, but we have issues. In this day, we have issues. 
If we acknowledge the promise of God for our lives, we will see his will done in our lives. We will see the goodness of God in the land of the living if we will not give up. I refuse to give up. You will hear it said from me, look and see what the Lord has done for me. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face, international. Get the word in your face. Be filled with hope. Don't let the waves trouble you. God said he would not let them overtake you. You will not drown. <laughs> His compassions, they, they don't fail. God's mercies are new every morning. And it's not just in the morning. Because, because of this new grace through Jesus Christ our Lord, that mercy is new every second. You don't have to wait till the morning. All we have to do is surrender to the Lord. This, these storms can't overtake you. You're a child of God. Know him and you will be invincible. And no weapon formed against you will prosper because look at that scripture too. Isaiah chapter 54. I'm not going there. But I just Isaiah chapter 54. Uh, don't just look at it through the eyes of Israel and, 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 and how he's talking about the wife that, that was a spouse that was a spouse and had no children. Look at it through the barrenness of your own life. The trouble that has overtaken you. We see we take our eyes off of Christ and we get wearied in our minds. We get troubled and bent over, bowed over. When Jesus said, don't don't let trouble, don't, don't let trouble overtake you. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. He, he wants to keep you. Shalom peace. He wants to keep your heart and mind. Be blessed, people of God. I love you. And be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Bye-bye.